Hey guys, it's Bella and welcome back to my- that was like the weakest wave ever. <laughs> welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an anti-haul. So if you guys have no idea what an anti-haul is, the idea originates from Kimberly Clark. I will link the videos down below if you guys want to check them out. Um, but it's basically the opposite of a haul, hence the name anti-haul. So instead of showing you guys things that I have already bought, I'm going to be telling you guys things that I'm not going to be buying and why I'm not going to be buying them. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Let me know if you guys want some more of these and let's go ahead and get into it. And if I have lipstick on my teeth at any time throughout this, I apologize in advance. But the first thing that I'm not going to buy is the Morphe Prep and Set Spray. First of all, I never know what to believe with Morphe, whether it's like an overhyped product, if people are just trying to get you um, to use their discount codes, or if it's genuinely a good product. On top of that, um, I read that it is sticky, which is how you know it's going to keep the makeup on. I don't like sticky setting sprays. I don't like sticky anything on my face. Things that are sticky, no thank you, I will pass on that. On top of that, Morphe's shipping to Australia is something like 30 US dollars, which is crazy, and I'm not prepared to pay that much for anything, let alone a setting spray. The next thing that I am not gonna be buying is the Clarisonic makeup brush. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard about it. I saw it on Tati's channel because I love watching Tati's videos. She she is incredible. She actually seemed to really like this brush and it looked really, really good. Like it looked, the makeup on her skin looked phenomenal, but the whole time I was watching it, all I could think was this makeup brush is like the same as their cleansing brushes and their cleansing brushes are meant to be deep, like pore cleansing, like really deep pore cleansing and get all of the gunk out of your pores. So all I could think about it was, does that mean it's gonna be pushing the makeup deep into the pores? And I'm not about that. I'm not great on skincare, so I feel like if I do get that foundation like pushed right down into my pores, I'm not gonna know how to clean it out properly. So I don't know if that's the deal, but I just feel like considering it's the same as the cleansing brushes, that it's just gonna be pushing all of that foundation and everything that you use just like right deep into your pores and just clogging them up and Ooh, I just, that's all I can think about. I will also not be purchasing the Laura Geller Diamond Dust. I'm kind of over the whole holographic thing. I feel like for me personally, I'm never actually going to wear a holographic highlighter. I like to stick to my really neutral highlighters and holographic is just not something I would wear on an everyday look. On top of that, I feel like everything holographic is not really truly holographic. I feel like it's more iridescent so I don't know what this one like would look like but I feel like it's just gonna come up as like a purple or a blue or a pink on the skin because that's what all of these holographic highlighters end up looking like also the new Zoeva basic moments palettes I'm not gonna be buying them the new ones that they're releasing I am incredibly obsessed with Zoeva and their brushes and just the whole makeup brand in general but these palettes I just saw them and I was kind of like oh not really my thing the Colors are cool toned and I really hate cool toned eyeshadows and on top of that I feel like all of the colors in there are pretty light and they all kind of look a bit gray like even the pinks have like a little bit of gray in them they just look washed out and they just don't get deep enough for me like I feel like in my palettes I always need something deep or something dark and these just don't have that and I will also not be buying I saw Kylie Jenner is releasing the new um, Three new lip shades, some velvet matte, velvet lipsticks, liquid lipsticks, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly haven't bought anything from Kylie Cosmetics since the holiday collection besides the Kim Kardashian collection because I love nude lipsticks and I love Kim Kardashian so I had to get that and the packaging was just ugh, so dreamy. But I'm kind of over Kylie Cosmetics. I feel like people don't buy from Kylie Cosmetics because it is a well-respected, well-regarded brand. I feel like they buy from Kylie Cosmetics because it's Kylie Jenner. The products aren't the best on the market. I feel like they're a little bit overpriced. You're more paying for the brand rather than the product. And it's like nothing amazing. It's nothing new. It's nothing like exciting. You know what I mean? Like it was exciting at first because it's like, oh my God, Kylie Jenner is opening a makeup brand. That's really cool. But now it's just like the same old thing. So 
unless she comes out with something amazing, like incredible, that I'm like, oh my god, I must have it, I probably won't really be buying anything from Kylie Cosmetics. Now, while I'm doing this anti-haul, and while it's my first anti-haul, I thought if I do do another one, I'm not sure yet, um, but if you guys do want to see another one, let me know. But I thought in this one I would tell you guys the brands I'm not going to be buying from, like specific brands that I don't want to buy from. So the first one is Fasali. I think, I'm not sure how you pronounce that brand, um, but they basically have like oils and elixirs and stuff like that. I actually did purchase the, I think it's the Rose Gold elixir or something it comes in like a white bottle and it has like gold on it and I don't know it just sucked and I was never planning on buying any products from this brand before I bought that one the only reason I bought it was because I wanted to do a comparison between that and a dupe which is the NYX Honey Do Me Up and the Honey Do Me Up was so much better and I paid $85 for this Farsali oil and I am never going to use it again because I hated it I just feel like the products are overhyped and they're overpriced so I feel like it's all just a big gimmick and I just don't really want to purchase anything from them Nothing against the brand, nothing against the brand owner, just feel like it's just one big overhyped brand. The next brand I'm not going to be purchasing anything from is Huda Beauty. And there's a few reasons for this. First of all, I feel like the products are overhyped. One thing that I don't like in a brand is when they sell mink lashes and they market them as cruelty free. Mink lashes are not and will never be cruelty free. Minks are not friendly animals. You can't keep them in a free range zoo and collect the hairs on the ground. Like that's not a thing. I've never even heard of a free range mink zoo. If you guys have ever heard of one, feel free to let me know where they are. I would love to be enlightened. Mink hair for mink lashes comes from mink farms. So whether or not they're going to, whether or not they're collecting the hairs that have fallen from the minks or not, they're still getting them from mink farms. So these minks are still being treated terribly, they're still going to be killed for their fur, and I just don't agree with that. I think mink lashes are absolutely horrible, and I hate brands that sell mink lashes and market them as cruelty free. I just hate it. It is like one of my biggest pet peeves. Your mink lashes are not cruelty free. Like, market them as they are. Just say, this is a mink lash. Don't say, it's cruelty free because it's not. Another thing that I heard about a while ago is that Huda Beauty does not post black women on her page. And if she does, it's a video or a photo where people can make fun of that woman rather than grab inspiration from them and be like, wow, what a beautiful makeup look and like praise the person. And honestly, I don't even think she posted black women at all until she started getting called out for it. The next brand that I don't want to purchase from is Tarte. Um, okay, so I have a few reasons for this as well. The first thing, I'm just a little salty because I bought um, 300 US dollars worth of products from them and then I never got sent. <laughs> and they couldn't send me new ones. So that was that. I never got them and then I was just too scared to buy more stuff from them because I didn't want it to get lost again and to not receive it because that's like a lot of money. So that, first of all, put a bad taste in my mouth. And I could have gotten over that and like bought stuff from Sephora, but then I heard that they take people off their PR list for talking negatively about them. And I'm just not down for that. As a brand, you have to expect criticism. Like, you can't just expect because you put people on these lavish trips and spend these amazing amounts of money on sending people overseas and giving them incredible PR packages that people aren't going to criticize you if they don't like your product. People have different skin, people have different tastes, people are not going to like every single product that a brand puts out. Like, I absolutely love Zoeva, but I'm not into their new Basic Moment palette because that's just my personal preference. Brands have to accept that people are going to critique them and rather than taking offense to it and taking people off the PR list for criticizing them and making a critique of them and giving them constructive criticism rather than hate, they should take it on board and better themselves as a brand and, you know. Another thing is I feel like it's hard to tell whether a lot of the products are good or not because one, people would be scared to take them off the PR list of Tarte because Tarte does have amazing trips that they take people on. They have amazing PR packages and I feel like a lot of people wouldn't want to say bad things about their products because they would be scared to lose that. So in that situation, it's kind of hard to tell whether or not a product from Tarte is actually good or not. You know what I mean? And the last brand that I won't be buying from is Jeffree Star and I really hope I don't get ambushed for talking about this 
on my channel. I personally um, have seen Jeffree Star say some horrible things and I know a lot of the defense of this is like it happened 10 years ago when it was a really long time ago but it's not like things have happened recently where he's been rude to people online and he has said horrible things about other influencers and brands and just i feel like a lot of drama just surrounds him honestly i would forgive and forget if he apologized but he never has i feel like the most he's ever said is you know it was 10 years ago i've changed like never an outright i'm sorry like what i did was really shitty i fucked up I'm sorry like just own up to it and apologize and I feel like it would be fine but the fact that there's no apology and it continues to happen just kind of turns me off the brand <sighs> so I'm not gonna say any more about that because I don't want to get ambushed but that is just my personal feelings I just don't want to put any money towards that or brands or people that I don't believe in and don't want to support so I hope you guys understand and respect that I also hope you guys enjoyed this anti haul make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did and you want to see more and subscribe to my channel hopefully I will see you guys in my next video bye